Hello and welcome to a brand new series on this channel. My name is Sven van der Plank and I'm going to be playing today Rise of Flight for the first of hopefully many times. This is the very first time I've actually played this game. Uh, I have no flight experience whatsoever, but I really wanted to play it for a very long time. I've watched a lot of videos, watched a lot of uh, channels, even Let's Plays, read a lot about the kind of flight mechanics, and it's something I'm definitely going to be interested in. So I've set up my own little mission here. Uh, and create a little story here for my character. So it's the 28th of July, 1915. So this is the one year anniversary of the war started. Uh, it began with Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia, I think it was, um, which may even have been, it was either on their border or uh, a province of a, or a contested province of Austria-Hungary. Anyway, this is the diary of Felix Bauer. This is the pilot I've created for the Austro-Hungarian Air Force. Let's read this description here. One year has passed since the war started. Russia advanced on Austria-Hungary and swept into eastern Galicia, but we were able to fight them to a standstill. Now Italy, our former ally, has joined the war against us. The Luftfahrtruppen, the or LFT, are looking for new pilots, and in an effort to escape the hellish fighting on the ground, I've enlisted. After basic flight training in one of the uh, Flieger Ersatz company, I've been given my first posting to a frontline unit. Flieger Company 1, Flick 1, is based just outside Chernovitz in northern Bukovina. The Russians aren't far to the east. Today I'm taken to the skies for the first time in the company's sole fighter aircraft, a new Faltz E2. Now, if you're familiar with this game, you're probably wondering, wait a minute, there is no Faltz E2 in uh, Rise of Flights, but uh, you'd be eh, partially true, partially wrong, as I'll be explaining more as I uh, get going. Anyway, my plane is all set up. We're going to be down in this airfield just here to the uh, northwest of Chernovitz. So most of this map here is Galicia. The vast majority of it is. But this area around about here is the northern part of a small province in eastern Austria-Hungary uh, called Bukovina. And I think this edge of this map here, maybe even just the rightmost edge, is Russia. So we're right on the border between the two. The front line runs just along the outside of the city here, then up towards the center and up towards the top of the map here and way to the north as well. Uh, just to our south is Romania. This is all modern day Ukraine, but at the time Ukraine didn't exist. This is uh, Austria-Hungary. Anyway, let's uh, begin the mission. Okay, here we are in mission then, and I can look around my aircraft here and you'll see we are flying the uh, Fouts E2, as I said. Now, I think I mentioned this is the very first time I am playing this game. Uh, I did a very short takeoff flight just to check that all the controls were working, and that is it. I have never really engaged anyone. I've never uh, done any length of mission. So I'm going to be beginning right from zero, and uh, you can follow me along as hopefully I improve and uh, get pretty good. Anyway, let's have a look around our aircraft. You'll see this is a, a, an iconic design for the German Air Force, the uh, Eindecker. Uh, a design based originally on, a, I think it's a Moran Solnier. Uh, oh yeah, and I should say at this point, there's going to be a lot of foreign pronunciations in this game, and uh, very few of them I'm going to get correct. Please correct me though, if you know the correct way of saying any of these. Uh, I do want to get it as accurate as possible. Uh, but my best tool at the moment is Google Translate, and we both know that that's not uh, terrifically accurate. Anyway, you can see that uh, this early aircraft doesn't even have ailerons or anything. You bend the entire wing, uh, wing warping it's called, to make the aircraft uh, bank, uh, roll, sorry, uh, to the left and right. Look around on the inside here, I can see various controls. I've got a compass on the wing here, I have uh, an altimeter here, uh, various controls down here. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, displaying something to do with the engine. There's a clock down here so you can see it's just now after 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and down here on the left I have my rev counter. Uh, tachometer, is that the word for that? And this here, that looks like it's uh, fuel related. Not entirely sure. Anyway, also you may notice I'm looking around. I'm using track IR right now. This is the first time I'm using track IR as well. So I might not have it set up terrifically, but uh, let's get started. Oh, one final control down on the uh, bottom side here. This here is not a throttle, but uh, a fuel mixture um, controller. So these early aircraft had no throttle whatsoever. Once they're on, they're going, and you can't stop them. Uh, not without turning off the engine anyway. So instead I can control 
the amount of um, throttle to a degree using this mixture control. But if I uh, put too few, uh, too little fuel into the engine, it's just going to conk out, uh, and then we're going to be flying around for not really much longer. We'll probably plummet to the ground. So what I'm going to do here is uh, put it to full rich here, and I'm going to start my engines. And then what I'm going to do is drop the um, fuel mixture as low as possible. I'm going to see at what point it cuts out, so I'll know for future uh, flights. Like I said, this is the first time I'm flying, so let's have a go. Right, engine should be starting any second now. I have it full rich. As soon as I get going, I'm going to uh, lean out that mixture. You'll see my rev counter is about to start increasing. I'm going to start moving forward, so let's thin out the mixture here. How low can I make it go? Okay, so that's the point at which it turns off. So let's try this once more. Might need to hit it once again. This time we're going to take off. Come on, engine. You know you want to start. Okay, here we go then. First flight, there's a flight. Just gonna roll along here, pick up speed, and let the aircraft take off on its own. Okay, pulling back ever so slightly here, and away we go. Into the air. Okay. I didn't really explain my uh, mission here. This is just a test flight. I have no objectives as such, but I think my goal is to fly along to the uh, southeast and go and investigate Chernowitz, and then I'll do a loop down there and then fly back to my airfield. Now I have all the gauges turned off. I have no maps, so full immersion mode. I've only got my knowledge of the map that I looked at beforehand and the uh, dials I've got in the aircraft itself to know what's going on. To my left is a river, so I want to get over this small village ahead of me, and I'm going to follow that river to the uh, southeast. Right, so I'm full rich in the mixture right now. Let's thin that out a little bit, and you'll see that my revs increase ever so slightly. So I think that's the optimum fuel mixture, or fuel air. Too much fuel, and you're not getting the best performance from it. But too little fuel. And you can see the revs will start to... Oh, sorry, that's too much. Too little, and you can see the revs are going down. So I can control my speed to a degree. The aircraft feels like it's shuddering a little bit, so it doesn't like the fuel mixture being this low. You can put it right the way down to here, but I think if it goes any lower... Yeah, you can see the engine's not firing properly. Let's put it back up. I want to get there as quick as possible need to remember this small village here. My airfield is off to the left. I can just see at the end of the wing there. So something I wanted to do in these videos is just talk about the kind of history of the aircraft and uh, of aviation in general, so it's very early days for aviation uh, during World War One. A lot of people just completely um, discarded, that's not the right word, uh, didn't give it much, uh, they didn't believe it was going to be very significant in terms of uh, warfare, but World War One showed them all wrong. I think my draw distance is set up correctly. Maybe it's just because I'm playing at such a high resolution. This will be the first video on this channel as well. Uh, at 1440. I'm also 21 by 9 right now, so this is the how I would normally play a video game. Up till this point I've only been using 720 and 16 by 9. So let's talk a little bit about the aircraft then as we fly to the south. So the Fokker, the more famous Eindecker, uh, was based on the earlier Moran Solnir, which is a French aircraft of various different types. Uh, the type that most resembles the Fokker was the Type G and the Type H, 
which were more or less identical, only one was a two-seater, that's the Type G, and the other was uh, a single-seater, uh, neither of which had any weapons either. Uh, any weapons that were in the aircraft were carried by the crew and just fired like rifles. Um, but the Fokker wasn't just a copy, it was a, a definite improvement uh, on that earlier aircraft design. And of course, very famously, uh, was the first aircraft to carry a synchronized machine gun that could fire through the propellers, which was a significant uh, feature that allowed the Germans to take air control uh, in 1915, from about June, I think it was. And it wasn't until 1916 where the Allies could really uh, counter them in the air. Thankfully, the numbers were still quite low, so otherwise there would have been no air flights whatsoever, but it was a definite fear for all Allied air crews. Now, the Fouts was a licence-built Moraine... Is it Moran? Moraine? Moran Solnia? I think it's how it's pronounced. And so it was more or less identical to the French machine. Uh, being German, though, they had access to the synchronized machine gun uh, as it was invented in, I think, June. Now, this is the Fouts E2, which is using the uh, more powerful engine, uh, the same engine that was present in the Fokker E3, of which this is a mod for. Uh, and that's one of the earliest aircraft in Rise of Flight. You can just see the city just to the right of my nose over there. I can zoom in a little bit actually. There it is. So we'll be flying over there, we'll do a quick loop and then we'll fly back to our airfield. And uh, hopefully we will be able to land in one piece. Now I need to start familiarizing myself with the uh, area. I'm going to be doing a lot of missions here. So I need to check our compass, start learning the map. Thankfully I have a river and a big city to navigate from. Back to the uh, Fount C2 though. So the E1 had a smaller engine, the engine that was uh, used in the Fokker E1 as well. So I think it was the uh, Oberursel. I'm perhaps saying that wrong. In fact that might even not be correct. But it was a, I think, 80 horsepower engine, uh, a rotary engine, so the entire engine spins along with the propeller. And then a larger engine, uh, the Oberessel, is it U1? Um, that is the engine that was used from the Fokker E2 onwards, and indeed in the uh, Felt C2 as well. Now there was a Felt C3, but this was a different design compared to the Fokker E3, which was an evolution of the uh, Fokker E2. Now, both these aircraft kind of appeared for the first time halfway through 1915. I think the E1 first took flight. Well, it's very difficult to find information on this. I did a lot of reading, and just finding accurate dates for the Falts is almost impossible. I believe the earliest ones were 1915, may even predate the, uh, the Fokker. So the first Fokkers, or the Fokker Eindeckers, were the M5s, and then when the military bought them, they were redesignated uh, E1. There's Chernovitz to the right. We can do a quick loop here. I'll just fly over this factory. Now the Falz was a German design. Like many of the aircraft flown by the uh, Austro-Hungarians in the Luftwaffe Truppen, uh, they were imported from Germany. They did have their own uh, manufacturing base. Some were Austrian designs, some were just license-built. Um, though I don't believe any of the Austro-Hungarian uh, factories were producing the Faust itself. However, I do know that the Faust was used by the Austro-Hungarians, used by the Germans as well, on the Eastern Front. Uh, this may not entirely be, or they may not have been available at this point. So they were in, available only in very limited numbers. Most of the air combat was happening on the Western Front. So theoretically this aircraft could have been here on the Eastern Front. 
And uh, that was what was important to me. So, playing in 1915 here, this is far before what most of the uh, standard missions uh, happen in Rise of Flight. I think the earliest missions in the base game are September 1916 or something like that. Pat Wilson's campaign generator lets you play to as early as the uh, January 1st, 1916, where most or more aircraft are available. At this point, though, I think there's only about three aircraft in the base game that we're flying. Well, there's actually, yeah, there's maybe four or five. I need to think about it a little bit more. Here's Chernovitz below us, though. Don't see any large buildings. But it's one of the few cities on the Eastern Front. I think the others are, and I'm definitely going to mess up the pronunciations here, uh, Stanislaw, uh, Kolomnia, and uh, Tarnopol to the north as well. Again, correct me on any pronunciations I get wrong. Okay, we're making our return flight now. So I think the first uh, fount to be used um, alongside the Austro-Hungarian Air Force it was actually flown by the Germans though disguised as the Austro-Hungarians so when Italy joined the war uh, they declared war on Austria-Hungary but not on Germany though of course they did later on so the Germans in an effort to help out the Austro-Hungarians sent I think a, a trio of aircraft to the uh, border where they were fighting the Italians disguised their aircraft as Austro-Hungarians and then conducted a few bombing raids or maybe just a couple ground attacks I'm not sure whether the Iron Deckers actually could carry bombs there might be, in such early days of bombing there might have just been bombs inside the crew compartment that the crew themselves just threw out the edge like I said, very early days at this point now I think the river splits down here I think I'm going past the first fork in the road down to that second fork where I'm going to take it to the right and I'm going to look for that village that was on the uh, river side. Eindeckers, I think a total of around about 400 were built uh, of varying types. Uh, I think on the Felts, only about 50 or so were built. And since so few Fokkers, uh, I think I found like an exact number for the number of Fokkers used by the Austro-Hungarians. I think it was something like 12 E3s and 2 E1s. So very limited numbers. The chances of there being many Felts were extremely small. But what you'll find is that uh, as the war went on, and technology was advancing, uh, definitely air technology was advancing faster on the Western Front. So many of the outdated designs were sent to other fronts. So here we're on the Eastern Front, the Austro-Hungarians and the Russians. Germans were here too, in uh, smaller numbers. They were closer to modern day um, the Baltic countries. So Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, that kind of thing. Poland as well. Poland, I think at this point, um, was mostly under Austro-Hungarian uh, rule, maybe partly Germany, partly Russia as well. Uh, I think that's what Galicia is, so here we're on the eastern edge of Galicia, but this is only about a third of the country that's in this map. So enormous maps of the flight. I think I can actually see my airfield all the way down there. Yeah, I can. Also, I'd love your feedback on um, the aspect ratio. This, of course, gives me the most immersive experience uh, and have, I have the most area to look around. But uh, I know on YouTube, you yourself don't have a, a screen of that shape. It's not always going to be the best. I'm sure it's fine in full screen, but it's maybe a bit too small We've got it just to the side. Alright, we're gonna swing around. 
that what I would like to do is fly over our airfield to check uh, for wind. The trees are freaking out to the left there. Go down a little bit. I'm quite nervous about the landing. I have never landed in this game before. Now I've seen how it's done. I think I make a very gradual reduction to the power. By leaning out the mixture a little bit. And then I basically just allow the aircraft to land itself. But I've seen many videos of bad landings that <laughs> involve a lot of bouncing. And uh, this being my very first time, I'm extremely nervous about it. My altitude here. No, we're quite low. Below 500 meters, I think. Wait, is that in feet or meters? Looks like there's no wind whatsoever. Okay. Right, we're going to do a loop here. I'll point at this village to my left, then I'll swing around to the right, and we'll come in from those trees just there. Hopefully I will touch down just after the road. I think we might land a little bit too soon. A little short, but rather short than longbow and crash into the buildings. In fact, it's maybe not a good idea to be landing facing the buildings at all with my current flight experience. But it's what we're going to do. Felix Bauer's first flight in a scout. I'm not sure if the term scout was actually being used at this point in the war. So scouts were originally just single-seater uh, aircraft, but uh, what they found was single-seaters, or most air tasks, were better suited for two-seaters, or even more, in the case of bombing. And so the scouts were instead turned into fighters. Okay, there's the trees. Come on track IR. I think I'd rather have like a one-to-one -one setting rather than this. But I need to be able to look further than that. Yeah, so one-to-one -one wouldn't quite work, otherwise I'd be limited to about here. Okay. Here we go then, moment of truth. Gonna make our final right turn in just a second. mixture just a little bit here. Okay, we're down to 10,000. Was that 1,000? Surely it can't be 10,000 RPM. Maybe it is. We'll say 1,000 RPM. I am diving a little bit here, and so that's on purpose. Okay, I can see my aircraft ahead. Airfield ahead. I don't even think they're called airfields, are they? They're called aerodromes? So there isn't really a, a, a landing strip. Oh, there's a railway just there. Okay. Camera down all right. I don't think I have an airspeed indicator. Okay, there's the road. I want to make it just past that and then touch down. Let's use a little bit of rudder here. I haven't really done many actual maneuvers in the air. Go for a little bit more. Pull up. And there we go, touch down. Okay. Let's control it. Ah, look at that. Awesome. A little bit far from the airfield, but you know what? The ground crew will, can wheel me over to those hangars. And that's us done. First flight, rise of flight. I survived. I'm impressed with that. Obviously, that was incredibly basic. 
uh, especially if you're more familiar with this game, that was nothing impressive whatsoever. But uh, for me, I've got a big grin on my face right now. And yeah, that's us. All right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I will be back again soon um, with another video. Uh, I am planning to create a, a little story of sorts. One of my favorite um, channels on YouTube uh, is... Uh, oh God, I'm not even going to pronounce his uh, YouTube channel correctly. Lufshif. Um, but he has a long-running Austro-Hungarian Let's Play of this channel. And it just started with him doing a few missions in the early points. Uh, but then it basically developed into a full-on audio drama uh, with kind of character building and everything. It's fantastic. Uh, and it's a very small channel. It's one of the channels that kind of convinced me to take up YouTube and it made me realize that even like a tiny channel, there's a lot of fun to be had with it. It doesn't matter if you've got like a thousand subscribers or not. Just a handful of people um, can really build like a, or have, it can be fun to create videos for just a handful of people. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again. I think I have plans to do another video beginning on the first of the next month. Um, but yeah, tomorrow I think I'm going to put out a video explaining my plans for August. Uh, and that will better clarify what's going on. I am in the middle of a move right now. So my plans might change. Uh, I think at the moment I'm going to get a few videos out and then probably just stop altogether. Uh, I've got a, enough recorded for Doom to keep me going for quite a while, but there's definitely going to be a gap if I do decide to continue playing Rise of Flight. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and uh, hopefully you'll join me on another one of my videos soon.